apparently there's a TikTok video that recently went viral where a former Google employee exposes them for their dark perks. Companies like Google are known for their amazing perks, right? But what if I told you there's a dark reason those companies do that? To get you to work more for less. Funny and a little interesting that this went so viral because it's not like this is the first time that people have exposed and talked about these perks that these companies offer that aren't really all that great and are actually just hidden ways to get people to work more. CNBC did a whole thing last year why millennials were leaving their high paying tech jobs and that featured a few employees that worked at big tech companies that kind of talked about the same thing that this person in this TikTok video talks about. And of course we have Josh Fluke who's been talking about this stuff for years now. For this to just be news to everyone is interesting to me because it just shows you how little people are paying attention to this stuff. I figured why not just share this TikTok video with you guys so you can see some of the things that he points out. I'm definitely going to play devil's advocate on a few of these things that he points out, but I do want to start off by saying I do agree that many of these companies have these perks because they're trying to take advantage of you and they're trying to get you to work more for less. I'll go into that a little more at the end of the video and I'll also talk about a few things that I think he didn't really point out in this video that he missed that a lot of these companies tend to do. At Google, you get three square meals a day for free, but dinner would start at like 6, 6.30. So you had to stay late working more to get the free food. If they were flexible with their schedule and you'd start later in the morning, like 10 or 11, then 6 would be good for you to get your meal. But if you started at 7 or 8 a.m., staying till 6 or 6.30 to get a meal does mean that you'll be putting in extra hours. So I guess that just depends on which meals are you taking them up on. You didn't have to start at a certain time, then you can essentially get two meals regardless of whatever time you started at. Not trying to defend them, obviously, they're serving you late dinners because they want people to stay late. But if people start late and they want to feed the later crowd, then that kind of makes sense. And if you want to stay late for a free meal, then that's on you. I'd rather leave after my eight hours and go pay 20 bucks for a bowl of pho than to stick around till six or seven o'clock in order to get a free meal out of my employer. My favorite perk was the shuttles. They would start at 6 a.m. in the morning and they would run home till 10 p.m. at night. And they had Wi-Fi on them, so you would work while on the shuttle. He's saying that they had Wi-Fi on the shuttle so that you would have to work, but was anyone enforcing that rule? Like, if you choose to work, then you can. And I'm assuming that most people do, and that's the thing, right? You don't have to ride the shuttle. You don't have to open up your laptop and start working right when you get on the shuttle. But the way that these companies kind of trick you into doing this is like this, that you're gonna get on that shuttle, you're gonna see the rest of your colleagues on their laptops and they're working and why not? You have to commute, you're sitting on the shuttle anyways, but most of the people there are either gonna be on their cell phones or their laptops and if you've got free Wi-Fi, why not get some work done, right? And it's subtle and it's sneaky the way they do this because they know that psychologically, you're gonna feel like you're already at work. You're gonna see other people on the bus that work with you and it's gonna make you want to work. It's just how people are and they kind of just trick you into working longer and that's what this guy's trying to get across in this video. I love that you could bring your dog to the office and that the offices were dog friendly, but in reality they did that so you would not leave the office to go take care of your dog. And that's a sneaky one. And I always make fun of the dog friendly offices because I feel like they're kind of cringe. But he brings up a good point that I never really put together. And he says that the reason why they allow dogs in the office is because if you have your dog at home, you're going to be more inclined to go home during your lunch break to let your dog out. You're going to be more inclined to want to leave the office as soon as your day is over because you're going to want to go let your dog out and play with your dog. At least if you're a good dog owner, if you're a piece of shit and you leave your dog at home all day and you don't take care of them and you don't care about them, then that's another thing. But if you're someone who actually cares for their dog and you want to make sure that they're not locked up all day because you're at work, what a sneaky little way to make you feel like you're more at home too, right? Having your dog at the office with you makes you feel like you're more at home and then it makes you not really need to go home to take care of those particular duties. Pretty soon they're going to start letting you take your kids to work with you. Oh wait, I'm pretty sure a lot of companies are already doing that as well. While I think it's nice that a lot of companies do let mothers bring in their newborns to work with them. It's also just another way to get people to feel more at home and be more inclined to work and not want to go home. Really interesting how, how they do this. And you got to think that these big companies put so much research into how to psychologically manipulate people into using their apps longer. They're obviously going to put a lot of research and money behind how to psychologically make their employees work more for less.
they're not dumb. At the end of the day, they're worried about their bottom line. And if they can get more work out of their employees, why not? He also mentions how when he worked at Yelp, he brought up to his director, like, why is it that they have to make a certain quota, which was 12,000 before they're allowed to start making commission? When I worked at Yelp, there were baristas to make coffee for you and there was tons of snacks. And I asked my director though, why do I not earn commission until I book $12,000 in sales every month? And he told me, that's when we break even on you for the office, for the snacks, for the perks that we give you. I'm like, well, I would rather not have those perks and I'd rather just have a higher salary. He said, well, too bad. That's not really how this works. Because the truth is, at the end of the day, those companies write off those meals and they write off all of those perks because those are expenses that they spend on their employees and they get a bigger tax break by writing that stuff off than by paying you. It's really just a tactic to keep you there longer. And it, it may not seem like a lot. Now, when you're talking $150,000 a year salary, if you divide $150,000 by 52 weeks, that's $2,884 and some change. Now you divide that by 40 hours a week, you're getting about $72 an hour. Now let's say you just put in an extra 10 hours, right? You know, the hour or two in your commute when you decide to take the shuttle, maybe the hour or two that you decide to stay after work so you can have dinner there and just a few extra hours, right? You just put in an extra 10 hours a week and then you take that same $2,884 and you divide it by 50, now you're making $57 an hour if you're actually putting in an extra 10 hours a week. Now think about that. It's really easy to put in an extra 10 hours a week on that shuttle or, you know, waiting around for dinner or because you feel a little guilty because you went bowling or played some ping pong and then you're like, oh, I'll hang out and I'll work a little longer and maybe I'll, I'll have some dinner and I'll take the shuttle home. And then it's real easy to rack up those extra hours. That's how they get you. And that's how they make you work more for less. But you could make 120 a year at a remote job working from home and not having to deal with the commute or spending the extra time at the office because, you know, the best perk is to work from home. It's funny because in the CNBC video where they talked about millennials leaving their jobs, they talked about how a lot of these tech companies were letting people stay full remote because of the pandemic, because that video was done last year. The thing is that most of these tech companies are trying to pull people back into the office because they've noticed that a lot of people aren't actually working those extra hours anymore when they're at home. And they're also so invested in these big buildings that they've put so much money into that they need to bring people back to these offices in order to get their money's worth and in order to work their employees harder without them knowing. But one of the things he didn't mention in the video was the unlimited time off. A lot of these companies offer unlimited time off. And one of the things that is interesting about unlimited time off is that many times people are likely to take less time off if they don't have an actual amount of days banked or allocated to them having to take off because they kind of feel guilty about taking it off. Or sometimes the unlimited PTO gets rejected because they're just too busy. I recently accepted a position and it has unlimited time off. And luckily I did some research on it. I asked a lot of questions with human resources. And I also had someone who worked there who told me that they were actually really good about honoring the unlimited PTO. But many of these big tech companies will offer you unlimited time off knowing that many people won't take as much time off as if they just had regular vacation time that they were supposed to take. He didn't go into much of the recreational activities that many of these companies offer like game rooms and break rooms and nap pods and massage therapists and all kinds of different events and functions and live music that they offer. That's definitely another sleazy trick that many of these big tech companies do in order to keep you at the office and make you feel like you're just having a good time and trick you into working longer. Because they know if you're in the office, then you're more likely to contribute to work that's going on around you. That's pretty much it for now. I just wanted to share this video. I thought it was interesting and I'm seeing it in so many places and I just thought it was funny because there's already been so many people that talk about this stuff. Either way, let me know what you think about this stuff and thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.